Hey everyone, we have an exciting story today about the Nintendo Switch sales in Japan. Now, we often talk about Switch sales in regards to the United States and the MPD reports because that's where I live and that's what interests me most. But we can't ignore what's happening in Japan. And this report comes directly from GoNintendo.com. There will be a link down to the article in the description below. And it says, first up, Splatoon 2 has officially outsold the original Splatoon in Japan. The original Splatoon managed to sell 1,532,079 units in its lifetime. Splatoon 2 is currently sitting at 1,668,466 units sold. That is an insanely fast purchase rate for Switch consumers in Japan. So yes, in Japan where Splatoon is like the most popular new IP from Nintendo in forever, Splatoon 2 is already outsold it in less than a year insane on a platform that technically has a smaller install base than the Wii U had by the end. Moving on, second, we have official confirmation on the Switch surpassing the first year sales of PlayStation 2. In Japan, when looking at the same amount of time from launch until this week, Switch has managed to sell 3,258,083 units. From PlayStation 2's March launch to the end of December in its first year, the platform moved 3,016,622 units. So, yeah, we obviously don't know if Switch is going to stay ahead of PlayStation 2. Well, obviously, Splatoon 2 is going to stay ahead of the original Splatoon because there is no more sales happening for that game. Well, pretty much no more sales happening for that game. And Splatoon 2 is just taking off like wildfire. Could easily hit 2 million in Japan by the end of next year, if not by summer. It's insane numbers what Splatoon 2 is doing, but I want to focus in on those Switch numbers in Japan. PlayStation 2, right? PlayStation 2 is the highest selling home console of all time. Debatable if it is still the highest selling console of all time. Because DS came within... Uh, a hair of surpassing it and depending on which metrics you look at the the ds might have surpassed playstation 2 or the playstation 2 might still hold the crown as the highest selling single video game platform of all time dedicated video game platform that is either way to talk about switch in any regards to compare favorably against the playstation 2 even in these early years in a single country that's insane to me uh, obviously, we're not talking about it, it, it defeating PlayStation 2 sales worldwide in the first 10 months. That's not you know even on the table, I don't believe. But in Japan, there is a chance that the Switch could become the most popular gaming platform ever released in the country. Uh, just based on how it is starting. We have to know if it's, how long the tail is going to be. Is it going to continue high sales? There are actually some people disappointed pointed in the sales report from last week because the switch seemed to move around 270,000 units which actually is a lot in Japan but that is also it's like their Black Friday week right it's their highest selling week of the year for video game products uh, just like in the United States we have the week of Black Friday or that entire weekend if you want to count it together Friday you know Thursday on Thanksgiving through <laughs> through Cyber Monday if you want to just count all those sales together. This is like what, what this is for Japan for that week in terms of selling electronics and all that. And uh, a lot of people thought that Nintendo would sell 300,000, 350,000, maybe even 400,000 units. But it does appear that they sold out of every unit they made available. It's just that, you know, outside reports said that retailers were getting tons and tons of Switch units in. And it turns out that maybe they didn't get as many Switch units in as those reports may have made, led us to believe. Uh, what we do know is that Switch, every single week, completely sells out. There are still even some retail stores, not all of them, but some in Japan that still do. They'll come early, line up, we got Switches in stock, get a ticket. That ticket gives you a chance to, to buy a Switch. That still happens in Japan. Just to give you an idea of how supply has caught up here in the United States, it's not there yet in Japan. And there's probably other countries as well where it might not be fully caught up. Although some countries haven't really had stock problems at all since launch. It obviously depends on the various countries and the popularity of the platform in the given country. But this is still exciting news. PlayStation 2 sales defeated in Japan so far for Switch. Is it going to maintain this momentum? Nobody knows. 
All I know is we are in desperate need of a Nintendo Direct in January to show current Switch owners and people still on the fence because there's always going to be those on the fence being like, hey, look, great first year, but if it's just, why buy the platform now if it's just going to tank? We need to see Nintendo continue to show amazing support. Third parties continue to show amazing support. I mean, there's all this crazy good news also going around the Switch. Uh, some indie developers saying that like over the past week, they have sold 500% more copies of their game. Uh, than they have anywhere else, and it's crazy thinking about that because the game they're talking about wasn't even on sale. Uh, th I mean, we've heard indie stories like this over and over and over again if you pay attention to the fringes because, again, I, I don't report a lot on indie stuff here, but when we do report on it, it's usually something really, really positive, and uh, it it's interesting to see how indie developers are really blowing up on Switch, even bigger than they are on Steam, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, oftentimes all three platforms combined, even if you want to throw Vita in the mix, people are, are buying these games on Switch. The whole Switch has no games to play doesn't seem to be affecting indie titles too much. And, you know, that no games to play is kind of a misnomer. There are tons and tons of games. I think we just had a week not too long ago that had almost like 30 new games come out on Switch. I understand some people don't count indie games, but stop it. Seriously, stop it. Indie games are the new B tier of gaming and we need to accept our indie game overlords there are so many great indie games and so many just great games you're going to miss out on in general if you just dismiss them as an example if you have not played golf story and you loved the old school mario tennis and mario golf rpgs what are you doing with your life if you own a switch go buy golf story right now it is that good go buy stardew valley 2 go or stardew valley sorry if you've never played stardew valley and you're a big harvest moon fan Go buy SteamWorld Dig 2. That's the one I was thinking of. If you enjoy platforming games. It, 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 this is just a culmination of a lot of exciting things for me. To think about the popularity of this platform in year one. It is doing some unprecedented things in certain countries. Again, we're not saying unprecedented overall. But this is cool. Uh, I am interested to know if PlayStation 2 was obviously the highest selling platform in its first calendar year in Japan. I don't know if that's the case. Maybe that crown belongs to 3DS. Maybe that crown uh, belongs even the PlayStation 4 or, you know, the PlayStation 3 or something like that. Or maybe even the Vita. I don't know who owns the crown for fastest selling system in the first year. Uh, but PlayStation 2 is the top of the, well, like when we're comparing anything to PlayStation 2, like, that's the best of the best gaming sales have ever been. For Nintendo to even be in this conversation, to be ahead of it in a major country, is astonishing to me. And, again, should these sales matter to you? Maybe not, but it excites me, especially in Japan, because it could mean that we're going to see more Japanese video games coming to Switch, more support from the likes of Square Enix and Capcom and Koei Tecmo and, and Namco Bandai and all the other companies over there. We know some Nintendo directly works with, but it would be great to see some of their games brought over. Kingdom Hearts 3, Square Enix, I really, I mean, you've released Kingdom Hearts games on Nintendo platforms in the past. It's time. Make Kingdom Hearts 3, heck, bring 1 and 2 and 2.5 and 1.5 and all the other ones. Bring a collection pack to Switch and then drop the Kingdom Hearts 3 game on us. I understand it's not going to visually compare to PlayStation 4 and PC, but nobody cares. Nobody cares. We just want to play that bad boy in our toilets. Well, in our toilets, on our toilets, uh, and then in our bedrooms, and then on the train, and on the bus, and then just dock that bad boy at home and never have to hit pause. Just keep that bad boy going non-stop. That's what we want to do. We want to enjoy almost every video game in the world that way, at least in my opinion. Uh, and this is coming from someone who, despite the fact that we're Nintendo Prime here, um... I'm a PC tech enthusiast, right? I love PC gaming. I feel like there's so many advantages to PC gaming, but the portability factor cannot be denied. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Rufflejance from Nintendo Prime, and if you like this video, you know what to do, and if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content. And you know what? If you're missing out on some of our videos or our live streams, you need to go into, uh, you know, don't just hit that subscribe button. Go to our page and hit the bell icon. That bell icon will ensure you get notifications for all of our live streams and all of our new videos going up instead of just whatever ones YouTube decides you might be interested in. It's kind of like Facebook in that way where if you don't go the extra mile as a subscriber, you might miss out on something, and I don't want that to happen. Anyways, folks, I will catch you in the next one. I'm out.